Tonight, the little security flaw that could have exposed about one-third of the Internet, Comcast's plans for Wi-Fi phone service, and the Air Force embracing Google Glass. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 61 for Tuesday, April 8th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit. Makes electronics repair easy with free repair guides plus all the parts and tools you'll need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. I'm Sarah Lane and let's get right into the tech feed. A bug in OpenSSL, which if you haven't heard of, is an open source cryptographic library securing a big percentage of the Internet's traffic, from apps to websites and services, a lot, has just been discovered and publicly disclosed. The bug is dubbed Heartbleed and tricks almost any system running any version of OpenSSL from the past two years into revealing big chunks of data sitting in its system memory. This is sensitive stuff, encryption keys, leading to usernames and passwords and credit cards and other information breaches. Worse, the bug appears to leave no trace in server logs, so there's not an easy way for a system administrator to be sure that their servers haven't been compromised. OpenSSL has released an emergency patch for the bug, along with a security advisory this afternoon. In the meantime, though, developer and crypt cryptography consultant Filippo Valsorda has published a tool that lets people check websites for Heartbleed vulnerability. Google, Microsoft, Twitter, Facebook, and Dropbox appear unaffected, but popular services Imager, OkCupid, and Eventbrite do not. And this morning in an emailed statement, Yahoo acknowledged it was working to fix the vulnerability on many of its properties, such as the Yahoo homepage, Yahoo Search, Yahoo Mail, Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Sports, Yahoo Food, Yahoo Tech, Flickr, and Tumblr. It's bad. The information is reporting that Comcast is in the early stages of building a Wi-Fi-based wireless phone service, which would rely on routers and public hotspots to handle the bulk of its services. The remaining coverage would be gathered from leased spectrum from traditional carriers when Wi-Fi co coverage is unavailable. Republic Wireless, which is a U.S. company already using this model, is able to undercut larger wireless car carriers with attractively low monthly plans that start as low as $5 a month. But Comcast's infrastructure, customer service centers, retail locations already in place could give it an edge in this same market. The company is actively pursuing a buyout of Time Warner Cable and in a 180 page merger filing with the FCC, Comcast confirmed that it was considering using wireless home gateways and outdoor hotspots to create a Wi-Fi first network that could both complement and supplement the carrier's 4G data networks. Twitter unveiled a new design for user profile pages today. Bigger images, the option to choose a top tweet to display among them. The shift joins Twitter's recently redesigned desktop homepage and profile pages and new features in the app that allow multiple photo uploads per tweet and user tagging. What other social network might this remind you of? A lot of people are saying Facebook. Twitter had 241 million monthly users at the end of December, the quarter ending in December, which is less than a fifth of Facebook's user base, and its pace of user growth has slowed. But the company has already broadened its ad retargeting program, is reportedly planning to roll out new ad products over the next six months, including app install ads, which are both money-making formats that have worked well for Facebook. So if you can't beat them, clone them. Windows XP reached the end of its extended support period today, RIP XP. Microsoft will stop providing automatic security updates, plus Microsoft security essentials will no longer be available for the OS. However, Netcraft.com is reporting that thousands of websites are still hosted on Windows XP computers, the largest share, nearly a third of which are hosted in the United States, including 14 U.S. government websites, such as a webmail system used by the state of Utah. Unsupported web-facing Windows XP servers are prime targets for hackers, especially if new XP vulnerabilities are discovered, as no security updates will be available to fix them in the future. In an effort to ease the transition, the UK government recently struck a deal for Microsoft to provide it with an extra year of support for Windows XP, even though there are no current XP-powered websites under the gov.uk top-level domain. 
The curved AMOLED screen on Samsung's Gear Fit smartwatch has been criticized by some for its vertical display mode, which isn't always convenient to read on a wrist. But by its official April 11th launch date, Business Insider, Pocket Lip, and Sam Mobile have all reported an update that'll let you rotate the Fit's interface to portrait view. In other Samsung wearable news, a report from the Korea Herald says that the company is developing a smartwatch with its own integrated universal subscriber identity module, or USIM, to allow a user to make and receive phone calls without having to pair the watch with a smartphone. And reports a patent has already been filed with the Korean intellectual property office for the name Gear Solo. All right, coming up, who needs a bionic kangaroo? I know I do. And up next, I'll talk with Richard Byrne Riley from Venture Bean about his exclusive article on how the Air Force might want to use Google Glass. But first, let's take a moment to thank iFixit, makers of the ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit contains 70 tools to help you with almost any repair or any project. It includes iFixit's 54-bit driver kit with standard specialty and security bits. Also includes ESD safe precision tweezers, an anti-static wrist strap, opening tools to get inside any phone, tablet, game console, notebook. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's the gold standard for electronics work from garage hackers to the FBI. But more importantly, its unique tools are used by repair technicians everywhere. It's backed by a one-year warranty. The ProTech Toolkit is only $69.95. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself, just about anything. Visit ifixit.com slash twit for free step-by-step -step repair guides and all the parts and all the tools you'll need. Enter the code TN2 at checkout to save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2. number All right, joining us now is Richard Byrne Riley, a reporter for VentureBeat, to talk a little bit more about how Google Glass may be used by people other than consumers. Hi. Hi, Richard. Hey. How are you doing? Going? I'm doing good. All right. So we've got a story from you. It's called the U.S. Air Force is testing Google Glass and building apps for battlefield use. Sounds exciting. What's going on here? Oh, it's really exciting. Um, the Air Force um, procured uh, two pairs of Google Glass through the uh, Google Glass Explorer, which at this point is, has been available to the general public through a kind of lottery uh, system. Uh, and they are running them through their paces, so to speak. Uh, they are having very good results with them so far. Uh, in addition, uh, the, uh, the Batman crew, uh, as they're called, are developing proprietary software to enhance the existing capabilities of the glasses, you know, which is run by Android. So it's just incredibly exciting uh, development. So, all right, so who is, who's actually developing this software for the Air Force and, and what can we expect to see in the future? Uh, I don't know if we're going to see anything in the future. Um, you know, this is a beta test, so the, the Air Force, this is the uh, 711th Human Performance Wing at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. Uh, they are the standard bearer for technology development for the Air Force uh, across the United States and the world. So there's some really highly intelligent people there, both civilian and military, behavioral and technology scientists working on this. Um, they are simply at this point taking the existing technology and building their own software to fit uh, their own missions, which you know differ you know greatly from a say a civilian capacity. So whether they will actually end up adopting um, Google Glass um, as a as a de facto kind of um, technology uh, for you know the men and women of the Air Force remains to be seen. So we're pretty early in the beta testing stages. So I guess the thing to say would be to stay tuned to see what happens uh, with the developments and the beta testing. Do you think that just the the mere idea that uh, the, you know that the military, the government is interested in this technology helps with some of this Google Glass stigma that I know Google is struggling with in the consumer market? Um, not at all. Uh, the you know, Google will tell you if you talk to them, if you have the privilege of talking to Google, <laughs> um, that uh, they have no uh, working uh, official relationships with the military. On the other hand, uh, the military uh, and perhaps the intelligence community sees a, uh, a possibility uh, of, of a lot of inroads 
uh, with regards to their missions being accomplished by wearing an ex you know, existing Google Glass or building on the platform as it exists. So um, I, I don't think it's a stigma at all. Um, and this is probably coming from people who are concerned about civil liberties and so forth, which I totally understand. Um, I don't think Google is in the business with, with, with regarding the Google Glass uh, and the military applications or potential applications for uh, for data breaching or data collecting on individual users. Um, and that's something that the military would would be addressing, you would one would think uh, right up at, at the top. So well, speaking of future uses, today Google also introduced glass for work. What yeah. are some of the industries that are looking at glass for work? Well, VentureBeat has written about it. Um, uh, surgeons um, using it during very complicated operational procedures, which is pretty neat, um, and have, have reported um, extremely positive results on the existing platform, not with any enhancements in terms of the software capabilities. Uh, the New York City Police Department also uh, is, as I broke the story, as I read about and broke the story in February, beta testing Google Glass uh, for possible use in uh, intelligence investigations in, in addition to uh, routine patrol duties. Uh, you know, that's 34,000 people in the NYPD, men and women. Uh, it's huge, uh, and if and if and if the NYPD ends up adopting uh, the technology, that's a huge revenue uh, stream and windfall uh, for the technology giants. So and the same applies to the military. Uh, Civilian-wise, uh, again, the police, fire departments, um, and you know, municipal and city workers, uh, people doing spot inspections on properties and things like that. So the uses are myriad, and it's uh, and, and Google understands this. They're smart people, so um, you know, it remains to be seen whether it's going to be embraced on a, on a, on a wholesale basis by the American public. With regards to the military, um, that remains to be seen as well. So we're in the early stages, right? Yeah. Well, I you know, in San Francisco where I live. Just wearing Google Glass itself is controversial, depending on which bar you want to go into. You'll either be welcomed or very unwelcomed. Do you see this becoming more of something that is used, you know, for work? Is Google Glass make more sense for a surgeon rather than a civilian walking down the street wanting to take some photos of the world around them? Uh... That's a great question. Uh, do you, I mean, you know, that's funny. I, you know, do you want to go uh, out drinking with your friends uh, wearing Google Glass? I mean, how much information do you actually need in, when you're reposing or socializing with friends? It's pretty funny. Um, uh, as opposed, rather the surgeons and stuff, uh, surgeons speaking specifically here, um, you know, the applications and the potential is is enormous. And again, the great American way, right, in terms of technology, is embellishing and enhancing upon existing platforms. And that goes back to what the whole world of apps sprung from, right? Making it better and taking technology and matters into your own hands. So you can see where this is going, right? Yeah, exactly. Richard Byrne yeah. Riley, a reporter over at VentureBeat, telling us a little bit more about how Google Glass can and is being used in the future. Exciting stuff. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Richard. And do tell folks where they can read more of your work online. Yeah, you could read me at VentureBeat and, and uh, all the uh, lovers and haters can also reach me directly, Richard at VentureBeat.com. And uh, always appreciate the mail. Thanks for having me as well. Excellent. I think you're the first person who has ever given out your email address. You're a brave man. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Take care. Finally, why don't we just say hello to the best thing you're going to see all day, the bionic kangaroo. Yet, I'm not kidding, it's a hopping robot developed by Germany-based Festo. It weighs just over 15 pounds, about 39 inches tall, and the kangabot, I made that up, can jump forward at lengths of about two and a half feet and has a vertical leap of about one and a half feet. When it lands, it uses the recovered energy stored during leaps for its next jump. It's like a hybrid. The robot's movements can be controlled through a wireless armband attached to a human who can direct the bionic kangaroo to hop forward or turn in small circles and change its direction. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.
Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.